So I, I see we're in a creepy garage, so that probably means you're gonna do something horrible to me. How savvy you are. Yeah, well, you look like you crawled out of a discount party city, Ding. so I bet you're an upstanding dude. All villains wear black cliché. Ding! You self-identify as a villain? Who does that? <laughs> you are discerning. Intelligent. A nitpicker. You will serve us well. You will serve us well, cliche. Ding! <laughs> hey, Dan. Thinking about making another Let Me Tell You about... No credits. Why are you dressed like that? All villains wear black cliche. No, repeatedly when scared cliche. So there's this channel called CinemaSins. Maybe one or two bajillion of you know about it. They make lame videos about movies where they nitpick them for laughs, but the way they lazily juggle humor and film insight fails on this tangled web of intentions that they've built for themselves. And they're extremely successful. The result of this confounding equation is they spawn a lot of equally obnoxious imitators. Sin branded. These are the people who have co-opted CinemaSin's crap content, regurgitating it to scalp viewers for themselves. We blatantly copied the format of CinemaSin's and applied it to video games. Those who say we're unoriginal are correct because we lost our creativity a long time ago. What do you think about this shameless mimicry, CinemaSin's? Eh. CinemaSin's stance on their rip-offs is the same as their defense against well-constructed criticism. If you can't say something nice, close your browser and pretend it doesn't exist. Be warned! I'm about to break preschool's golden rule and say some not-so-nice things about the content of these channels, because their popularity signals a fundamental lack in the internet's ability to discern quality video content from unfunny claptrap. Today, we take Cinema Syndom to task. They'll pay for their internet misdeeds! In truth, I actually just want to help them make funnier, more meaningful content. Uh, forgive my indulgence, I don't typically get to play the bad cop. Speaking of which, I have Dan with me, and... Uh... My objective is threefold. First, to enlighten you all on the issues of CinemaSins. Their videos contain consistent errors, their presentation is confusing, and their approach to media is toxic. Second, we'll examine the Sin Branded as a demonstration of the dangerous toxicity in regards to interpreting media CinemaSins inspires, and have a laugh at their video's expense. What fun. Finally, we'll go fist deep into the wealth of ineptitude that can be contained in a single Sin Brand video by refuting YouTuber Dardigan's everything wrong with on the best version of Jenga till Yeti and my spaghetti, Catherine. He's Fortnite, and I'm a derivative knockoff. Let me tell you about the Sin Branded. The story of the Sin Branded is not that of some clowns crudely miming a popular YouTuber. It is the story of some clowns accurately miming the worst clown. The Sin Branded copy CinemaSins, maladies and all, with only minor differences in the subject matter they cover and performative sarcasm. To understand the sins of the Sin Branded, one must understand the sins of CinemaSins. A video containing jokes along with criticisms is not at all a bad thing. 
Some of the most successful and influential creators on the YouTube platform do exactly that, and CinemaSins is among them. They've struck a chord with millions of people who find them hilarious while offering up film critique amid the laughs. The key to creating this kind of video is drawing a plain line between when you are using humor to make a point and when you're being serious. The way CinemaSins and their wholesale imitators present their content is deplorable. Watching an everything wrong with when you have any level of familiarity with the subject of the video is like being left 13 cassette tapes detailing why I killed myself. Listening to them, you find the tapes are instead four reasons why, five movie references, two non sequiturs, my favorite meme, and the one time I got a boner. They ding the bell for their japes and critical points both. This is a problem because it becomes difficult to tell whether or not CinemaSins is joking or critiquing something with honesty. To make matters worse, their comments are consistently founded on misunderstandings and poor interpretations. F off, dude. There is no point in jogging to the city to arrive 10 minutes after Thor like you've accomplished something. To give you an idea of how annoying this is, let's take some advice from a comedy mainstay here on YouTube. CinemaSins. Comedy comes mostly from truth. Or as my acting coach drilled into me, comedy is truth plus one. This sin fails as comedy and critique because it ignores truths about the scene. Yeah, Scourge can't catch up with Thor, but as he explains in a clip Cinema Sin showed right before this, The Odin charged Heimdall with negligence of duty. Previous guardian of the Bifrost, Heimdall, was going to go on trial for negligence. You know, not doing the job Scourge has been abusing the privileges of. That's why this feeble attempt makes sense and is funny. And this comment, stupid. And that's just one of thousands of these little errors that CinemaSins make that renders them utterly obnoxious. This battle sure does go to shit awfully fast. Like, so fast they should never even have attempted it. I mean, it ultimately ends with one bomber left to drop bombs. Uh, yeah, come in, Cinema Sins. Uh, you're just saying what's happening on screen. That's not a joke. Yeah. Hey, uh, here I am. The camera's getting closer to me. That's that funny shit. Why then do Cinema Sins have so many fans, and more importantly, imitators? I think it is actually the lack of finesse and the amateurish couch surfer humor that appeals to their viewers. Everybody loves riffing on movies for one thing, and this is about the most accessible and eye-catching format for riffing there is. It's a list. Our baboon brains can't help but be intrigued by lists. They're compelling in a way that is a whole topic unto themselves. The presentation of this list is so minimalist, anybody can do it, including a bunch of YouTube commenters, or hobbyists with microphones and capture cards. Let's not mince words here. Making this kind of list? It's fucking easy. Mechanically, yes, but also intellectually. These guys may think that they're making some kind of statement about any media that they cover, but this is what they're doing, alright? That's a sin. That's a cliché. That's it. Seriously, how often is a sin a question they could find the answer for if they took their heads out of their asses and watched the damn film? CinemaSins and the sin-branded perspective on films, games, whatever, is one-dimensional. They critique the puzzle by the individual piece, instead of how they all fit together. In this way, they are like a goldfish in a grimy bowl, constructed of their empirical logic, that distorts and obfuscates the things they watch. People in their creations are not empirical, and they can't be properly discussed as such. There's no equation for a perfect film, though no doubt producers are searching for one. And to call this opinion piece, because that's what it is, an ignorant, pointless opinion piece, some kind of idolin for the truth about a film's quality, is the true sin. Do cinema sins and, in turn, the sin branded make good points about the media they cover? Absolutely. Do they find technical errors or inconsistencies? Yes. At their best, these channels find a funny way to point out trivial mistakes or issues within films. This becomes problematic when those errors are taken to mean a film or game or whatever is bad because of it. The video looks thorough because they go through the whole film and spot things that maybe you didn't, but this style of critique devalues theme and the greater intentions of a work by their omission. This is why everything wrong with videos are so popular. Anyone can spot, or at worst invent, a technical error, but it takes a refined perspective and a good deal of thought to listen to what a film is saying and relay its message or explore it further. Everything wrong with is missing the forest for the bark. The ideas, the topics, the substance, the 
matter of media is so much more important than logical errors or plot holes, that is if they are plot holes and not a misreading or observations used to fill in that lucrative runtime. Slap a list of errors together, make a boner joke, maybe even throw in that fucking unbearable reverse sin sound every now and again, and the internet will be tricked into thinking you have a nuanced critique, a literate ridicule, when all you've done is attempt to deliver on a paper-thin premise you can't even fully commit to! It was never our goal to be exhaustive rundowns of a film's actual mistakes! Then why isn't your series called Dick Fart Ding with Cinema Sins? It's just as relevant to your content! Say whatever you want. Ding! And if you're criticized, just go, Bruh, I'm just memeing on ya! This video's a joke! You can find examples of CinemaSins making all kinds of contradictory claims about their intent. Like this clip of Jeremy saying his channel was created to call out lack of originality in films. The reason we started that channel was to point out when Hollywood started slacking. Started repeating too many things. Started falling into tropes and cliches and cycles. The, the, that's the point of the whole channel! This is in conflict with other claims, such as when Jeremy said they're playing a character, a parody of nitpicking internet culture who gets things wrong on purpose for jokes. However, if we're to read these mistakes as intentional, how come they own up to being wrong? We screw up something in every video. We're much more interested in moving on to new videos than dwelling on or fixing mistakes. The fact that CinemaSins admits to getting things wrong in videos says that the satire angle is false, further poking holes in their case. I've always been a hyper-observant, nitpicking jerk. So in terms of everything wrong with, is Jeremy playing a parody of himself? No, CinemaSins is just making poor content and hiding behind humor. You know, if Ron Howard said in an interview, oh, my version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas is a parody of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, no one would believe him. Being funny does not equal parody or satire. And I worry that the people making these Everything Wrong With videos and their viewers don't know that making jokes built upon falsehoods and telling them poorly is a bad idea and isn't funny. Their quality and implications are not excusable just because they are jokes. While it may appear like Everything Wrong With videos are dunking on media, under scrutiny, they fall apart. The constant errors that can be found in these videos rid the supposed commentary of any bite, which makes the videos annoying and seemingly ill-informed instead of funny. This is why everything wrong with fans and their creators feel the need to fall back on the oh, it's just a joke, why'd you take it so seriously lol stance. They can't defend their content, so they have to go on the offensive, making you look like some goober who didn't get it. In practice, this is like a ship dumping its car cargo so it can get to port faster. You can't toss out your premise after people have bought it. Then there's no value to your joke or critique. And I have to make this video in lieu of a refund. Then there's this nugget. We're considered fair use because we're parody, criticism, and review rolled into one. Yeah, it's all those things rolled into one. Like a perfect sushi roll. <laughs> oh. And uh hold together so well. Oh. Dinner's ready. There's no mist in the galaxy! Ding! That's not Earth! YouTuber and maker of actual satire of nitpicking internet culture, Bob Vids, has created numerous videos deconstructing CinemaSins content. In his superb video essay, Sustaining Stupidity, Why CinemaSins is Terrible, he suggests we swap CinemaSins with real fake news outlet The Onion to expose the muddiness of CinemaSins' satire. Both are attempting to do similar things, but The Onion works because its satire executed well. Their articles are over the top and exaggerated enough as to not be confused with real news. But if The Onion executed satire the way that CinemaSins does, their site would be purposefully incorrect, vaguely serious articles next to actual news with zero differentiation between the two. The only way you'd know if an article is real or not is if you researched it yourself. And when your audience has to figure out whether or not you're kidding, you've messed up the joke. And that's a huge problem, because if you're going to be wrong on purpose, and you have a track record of being incorrect about factual information, you need to be clear about which mistakes are intentional and which aren't. CinemaSins would rather you figure that out, fanboy! Dig this! 
not knowing the Mars smiley crater is real, and misspelling fewer are intentional errors, uh, but using the wrong Roman numeral for Final Fantasy VII is an honest mistake. Oh, what? You couldn't tell the difference? What are you, stupid? I would never say CinemaSins is trying to be 100% serious, but they do attempt serious critique along with their humor. Once you attempt criticism, your views are going to be more heavily scrutinized, and thus clarity is an imperative. So when Jeremy says he's confused about why people don't get his humor, I can only point to the devil may care attitude he has towards presenting his intentions. Why was this called a sin? Sin does not include lap dance. F you, that's why. So a sin is anything that you find wrong in the movie or any dickhead observational jokes you want to make? I do not endorse that definition of cinema sins, no. Definition of a cinema sin is a closely guarded secret. <laughs> CinemaSins don't know how to present the humor they are supposedly aiming for. Therefore, it's not my fault you aren't funny! You see, criticism is a bit like a bathtub. And comedy is like a toaster. You can dangle the toaster over the tub. Ooh, suddenly things are very exciting, aren't they? Ooh, what'll happen? What an electric video you have there. But you can't drop the toaster into the tub or the two start to mix together in a very dangerous way. And you kill your video. <sighs> But Kevin, you incredibly silly man, you've been talking about cinema sins. These beautiful boys are free from the sins of the father. They are free thinking individuals just because they are inspired by cinema sins does not mean that they share the same flaws. No, any blemishes are surely unique unto themselves. I'd be inclined to agree with you. If only these guys weren't the laziest copycats. This guy would be this great, guy would guy. Be great at cinema sins. This, this guy would be great at cinema sins. This position is as uncomfortable as a sin video. Haha. <laughs> Many of these content clones sins are them plainly calling out cliches. Their analysis of any given moment doesn't amount to much more than, oh, I've seen that thing before. They don't care about context or execution or the implementation of this idea. If it's something they recognize, they give it a sin. It's terribly ironic that the sin branded have stolen their production from another YouTuber, because by their own definition, they themselves are a cliche. This blatant theft is something that the sin branded are keen to admit to, presumably because they're too indifferent to change up the format in a substantial way, so there's no use denying it. CinemaSins created this everything wrong with themselves video in an attempt to own some of the criticisms that were put their way. But the video comes across as a kind of thinly veiled up yours to their critics. Naturally, when GCN and Annie Sins were confronted with similar criticisms, including, hey, you guys are just ripping off Cinema Sins, what did they do? Well, they just ripped off Cinema Sins. We're not reviewers. We're assholes. We're not critics. We're cynics. We often sin when making our own videos. We sin in our own videos. And we wear those sins like a badge because that's the mother point. And we wear those sins like badges because that's kind of the point. We're blatantly using CinemaSins style. It's over 9,000! We have to mirror clips because anime companies... We put our videos in the film and animation category instead of comedy because we've already given our full allotment of f**ks about people who don't understand sarcasm. We put our videos in the gaming section instead of the comedy section because one, we're not funny, and two, we are all out of fucks to give to people who don't understand sarcasm. We're only two videos in and we already stopped caring about people who subtract sins to the comments, write 12 page essays countering random points, and people who don't understand sarcasm altogether. We're Americans. America! which means we actively avoid learning or caring about other cultures. We're American. And nothing more really needs to be said about that. We have never made a movie, but we still make fun of movies. This movie sucks! Because f movies. We have never technically made a video game, yet we still make fun of video games. You wanna know why? Fuck! Cause fuck video games. We've never made our own anime, yet we feel like gods of shitting on them. Because fuck anime. 
Even this video is incredibly similar to CinemaSins videos. Now don't mistake me, having a similar style or format to somebody or something else is perfectly fine. All art owes something to its predecessors, and there's a saying that goes something along the lines of, good artists borrow, great artists steal. But you have to add your own spin to whatever you're stealing from, or else you're just a plage artist. <laughs> I'm so hungry. We get it, movie. Dan's hungry. Did you have to use the word so with emphasis? Emphasis? Standing. Is he waiting for the cupboard to open? Oh, well, fuck me. Food ex machina. Oh, yes. Product placement. I could sure go for a movie. Deus ex machina, ex machina. Oh, boy. My favorite. Dylan wears glasses, blue shorts, legs. What is this even supposed to mean? Who is this guy? They'll explain this scene two scenes later, but I'm still going to sin it anyway. How can this robot learn how to write if it doesn't have eyes? <coughs> Sitting down together, cliche. Man builds robot. By being carbon copies of CinemaSins humor and format, the Sin branded have copied their faults as well. No matter what stance an individual takes on their content, they place quips and critique together and grade them by the same metric. Bob concludes his video by asserting that CinemaSins have duped their fans into thinking the low quality of everything wrong with is acceptable, despite its many flaws. See, the problem isn't with CinemaSins, it's with everyone else. We just don't understand the tortured logic of their sincerely satirical, purposefully misleading joke criticism. The worst thing about CinemaSins Everything Wrong With series isn't that their content is a low-effort clickbait garbage fire. It's that they've somehow tricked their fans and themselves into thinking that garbage fire is art, which lowers the bar for art and for garbage fires. He has a point. Just look at how many people have co-opted CinemaSins garbage fire formula to moderate success. GCN. Any Sins. Gaming the Sins. The Honest Gamer. They all share CinemaSins issues because they emulate them to a T. Not just their format, but their mangled logic for their content. And being wrong a lot. <laughs> If Cinema Sins is like an old school mobster being like, yeah, move along, move along, then the Sin branded are the little mook next to him going, yeah, move along, move along, tell him, boss. For our next course, we have a sampler platter designed to show you all the ways that these guys are just as bad as Cinema Sins. We begin with the Honest Gamer. Old Honest G is the least offensive of the Sin branded. He seems to me just like an enthusiast who is able to carve out a little sustainable niche for himself, ragging on media, that doesn't take any of the obnoxious bite out of Cinema Sin's format, but of all the wombats biting on my toes, he has the cleanest teeth. You can tell that this anime doesn't take place in England, where we're experts of lining up properly, since here you can see they've formed a disorganized line where they're standing next to each other. Riddle me this, who goes first when you both arrive at the counter at the same time? THG advocates that these students are assembled to mob the food counter. But if we watch the episode, the next shot in this lunch hall shows Tenya and Ochako are in a separate line than these people. This teacher notices and picks on the one student in the entire classroom not chit-chatting, reading a magazine, or clearly playing on a handheld console. What a douche. You sure did describe what happened on screen there. Funny stuff! This moment is a kind of introduction to Light's mindset. These dickheads are messing around right in front of the teacher and Light gets called on? Like, what the hell is that? Light's view is that the world is really unjust and this is just more fuel for the fire. Special forces are denying allegations that they shot the suspect. Do the police really have to strongly deny this? I mean, you'd have heard gunshots and there were none. Just because people on the scene didn't hear a shot doesn't mean there wasn't one. The police are covering themselves by denying allegations, because if they were perceived to have recklessly engaged a dangerous individual with hostages, children among them, there would be huge repercussions. 
Anime gets confused, showing off a training montage where everyone is hard at work using their quirks, and then we see Creation Girl reading a bloody book before bedtime. Momo's quirk only allows her to create things she understands the construction of. This shot comes in a sequence of students practicing their quirks. We're supposed to match what she is doing with what the other students are doing. This is a, a difficult technique called paying attention. Oh my god! The JoJo vids. <coughs> he made me sick. You know, I'm half convinced he didn't watch the show and was just sent some clips by his patrons. Wait, there's speed involved in the process of lifting you up? Wouldn't that be more about strength and or stretching high up or something? Polnareff asked if they saw the stand lift him up, the answer being no, because his stand is that fast. He's not talking about the ability of his stand to lift him up, he is talking about the ability of his stand to lift him up and have no one see it. Are these guys actually talking to each other or not? I can't blame Callum for being confused in the moment, but later in this episode, it is revealed to the viewers that stand users can communicate with each other via their stands. We can't see the Stardust Crusaders' stands and thus don't see how they are communicating because this shot is from the perspective of An, who is not a stand user and thus cannot perceive their stands communicating. <laughs> He assumes there's a large body of water anywhere nearby. Did you not see the map of their flight route earlier in the episode? See the blue part of the map? That represents the ocean, which is a large body of- PAY ATTENTION! If she told you that, then her memory is pretty- considering she literally saw her husband get killed by Dior and in defense of himself and his wife, Jojo brought down the ship. It most definitely wasn't an accident though. Nah, Erina is fine, but your reading must be pretty shit. Because Joseph said there was an incident, not an accident. Those are different. <sighs> Terrible short-term memory here as he forgets that his leg was cut whilst casually walking down the steps in the first place. <laughs> I hate it when the Sin Brander do this! Ugh. So Callum didn't include the clip of Jotaro getting his leg cut seemingly by nothing and falling down the stairs. Next, Callum assures us that Jotaro forgot what just happened to him. When the very next line is Jotaro discounting the possibility of it being the branches that cut him. There, there's no memory involved here. Jotaro doesn't know what the hell happened and he's trying to figure it out. This, okay, this is goddamn sinful. Unless your whole video is jokes where you cut off the scene, don't do this. What valid points you had are tossed in the mud along with your credibility. I know I sound harsh after saying that Callum is the least smelly bag of dead gophers. I criticize because I care. In truth, I feel for the guy. He tried to separate from Cinema Sins by delivering the Sins in live action, and his fan base voted he stop. Overwhelmingly. Spray bottled if you're a copycat, spray bottled if you try not to be. Saturated a market as it is, I'd prefer it if Callum stuck to making meme montages like he does at the end of his videos. At least then the liberal usage of JonTron clips would be more tolerable. Does John know people paid you, Callum, to use his clips in your videos instead of writing sins? Oh, and Callum, I found an error on your channel description. And there we go, fix that for ya. Gaming sins. Oh, what a fresh take. Thus far, games have had free reign. Sloppy storytelling went unpunished. Unpunished, unpunished. It went, it went unpunished. Cheesy characters walked without judgments, free to wreak havoc and stuff. But that is all about to change. Welcome to a new world order. We're talking about a Novus Ordo slash Ordem, whichever is correct in Latin, I'm not sure. A world where video games are judged according to their sins, and uh, yeah, we like judging them. We're, we're you know, decent at it. Awesome trailer! Keep up the good work! This is the whole video! It it's just text tweeting towards- That's right, we're gaming sins. Go to our channel at youtube.com. Oh, well, when you sweet-talk me like that, I can't say no. 
Oh, God damn it, they're ripping me off! These guys boast the most subscribers among the Sin branded, and I think I know the secret to their success. They let the fans do the work for them, which in our silly little analogy makes these guys cultist recruiters! Hey, got the door open. That was... very loud. Almost as loud as you are, Sam. An explosion might not draw Shoreline's attention, but an explosion followed by a shout of, That was very loud! Well, that certainly will. Did Gaming Sins record this footage on mute? Shoreline has been blowing up stuff left and right, and we learn later without much oversight. One explosion in their own turf isn't going to draw attention. Hopefully they didn't hear us. Uh, hopefully we just blend in with the other explosions. Sam's voice is raised, but he isn't yelling. That was... very loud. And he certainly isn't making as much noise as dynamite. Whoever made this mechanical staircase is a dick, because they don't go all the way up to the top. This is a rather unique error. At first this seems obvious, this clip ends, and there's the stairs at the top, right? But like the corpse of a comedian, something smelled funny, so I popped in Uncharted 4, and as it turns out, Axel is right! The stairs don't go to the top, but he left out the part where it shows the top of the stairs descending below the ground. So he had a decent joke that is founded on observable information that he doesn't show. Whoops. <laughs> Some of the most fearsome rulers through history have possessed only a fragment of the Chintamani stone. Do we really have to try and explain the power behind the tyrants of history? Isn't it enough to just say that it's a powerful stone and leave it to that? Oh, that'd be really great writing. Watch out, Drake, for the Chintamani stone. It's very powerful. Time for some music. How about shredding this Schaefer? Plus, by drawing this parallel, Schaefer is showing how dangerous Lazarevich's unhinged mind with that stone could be. Gaming Sin's Metal Gear Solid 5 videos are a laugh. The Sin counter is a total mess. Here, they add two Sins instead of one. Then they correct themselves. Next, they add two sins instead of one again, but this time carrying on with the wrong sin count for the rest of the video. Villain explaining his evil plan to the hero cliche. Later, they use the ding sound instead of the reverse ding when they remove a sin. Truly epic boss battle. It's one of the best in the series. And earlier in the video, they subtract ten sins, but the graphic says plus ten. Get it together, guys. For someone trying to be as stealthy as possible, Venom sure does make a ridiculous amount of noise while he's running. That's why when Venom is trying to be as stealthy as possible, he doesn't run! Running is for getting somewhere fast, not sneaking by undetected. Peter is the only one running towards the gunshot when he couldn't have known it was Uncle Ben who was shot. And on top of that, he's doing this 10 seconds after saying, Not my problem. Peter not stopping the robbery doesn't contradict him investigating the sound of a gunshot. You're assuming Peter is going over there because he knows Uncle Ben got shot. He heard a and his spider sense tingled. That's why he checked it out. If he knew his uncle got shot, he wouldn't be so nonchalant. That was close by. I should get over there. Kevin, you're just debating a YouTube comment. Well, Kevin thought it was good enough for this video. You guys submitted hundreds of sins, and we compiled our favorites. Two years after cliche. Why is time passing a cliche? We compiled our favorites. Two years after cliche. Our favorites. I was with you for one year. Two years? You're pushing it. Old hat dev piece of shit. If you're so strapped for humor that you need to laugh at two years passing, what I just did is the kind of exaggeration you need to sell that joke. Your channel is shit and your criticisms are mediocre. Can I be in your next reading of your hate comments? LOL. Well, trash person, here you are. Some points made are legit, but I can't really take you seriously. Well, buddy, I'm not going for the Oscar, you know? I'm not Daniel Day-Lewis. Boy, if y'all don't bring Axel back. The f the fuck you mean, boy, y'all don't bring Axel back? You trying to start some shit, boy? You trying to start all f that nonsense? His comebacks suck. Yes, they do. GCN. Most of you know this by now. I am an asshole, and no game is safe from me. Get in the bunker, you games! GCN's coming! If people are willing to give us, like, genuine, honest critique, again, it's because part of them needs to get it off their chest. There are just some people that have seen our work or followed us, and it's like, hey, we want you to succeed, and we feel that, you know, something's missing. 
we need to take both of those opinions, mm -hmm. both our naysayers and our, our supporters who feel that we've, we've gone down a dark path. Hello? I have some concerns. In the high school drama club that is the Sin-branded narrators, GCN's Kid Atari is the pompous president. Every Sin video I've ever watched has a script like an essay written the night before it was due, and 80% of them were read by part-time telemarketers over Skype. Many of the missions feel the same, and all the environments feel the same, making the intro credits stick out like a sore thumb. The, you're a comedian, cliche. But Space Invaders here gives a decent performance. He conveys the smug, dismissive bastard persona even better than CinemaSins, which makes the channel he represents one of the worst. What are the odds? How utterly pointless. Variety. What the hell is that? Forced bullshit conflict I detect indeed. Eh. Uh. Hmm. Jump scare, you basic bitch. Kid Atari's asinine sarcastic praises are like cheese graters to the cochlea when paired with his quibbles. Fuck your feelings. I just want her dead. What the hell is the point of Jack's loyalty mission if she's just gonna continue to harbor animosity towards her fellow squad mates? Makes it feel like a complete waste of time. Fuck your feelings. Jack's loyalty is to you, not your squad. In Jack's loyalty mission, we learn all about the torturous shit a Cerberus splinter cell flying their banner pulled on Jack when she was young. What in that mission made you think Jack, who isn't one for nuance, would drop animosity towards a Cerberus executive? The Collectors just happened to pick a colony with one of my former crew. I don't buy it. And neither do I. How would the Collectors even know that Caden was part of your crew and a close ally, especially if Shepard had been dead the previous two years? Yeah, it's not like at the end of Mass Effect we were a big fucking hero or anything. Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. And that is Mass Effect 2 in a nutshell. Hire a bunch of random people, help them solve their daddy issues, and then you go out and fight the bad guys. Without ever knowing how they're connected to the plot and why they're important. Oh, and we're gonna go fight the Collectors without gathering any useful intel on them. Like, how many ships they have, what their weapons and defenses are, if they have a home. Why is the Omega-4 relay unmapped? You know, that's a very good question, Shepard. Because if we know about its existence and location, it should be mapped. It's kind of how mapping works. This is pathetic! Several times throughout the game, it is pointed out that, aside from the collectors, no one who went through the Omega-4 relay has returned. The very next line in this scene is the elusive man stating this. Why is the Omega-4 relay unmapped? What do we know about it? Only that no ship passing through it has ever returned. They all died! That's why it's unmapped! GCN even has the clip of the elusive man saying this in his video. He just muted the audio. <laughs> what the hell? Why did you do this? Shepard and Martin Sheen are not talking about the relay itself, my dear. There it is. It's mapped. You got us. They're talking about what lies beyond it. The collectors. They killed off the main protagonist within the first 10 minutes of the game for no reason other than shock value. They could have easily killed Shepard at the end of Mass Effect 1, have the Alliance recover her body, store her body in a secret facility for proper burial, have Cerberus infiltrate said facility through Shadow Broker Intel, capture her body, bring her body back to a Cerberus facility, and let the Lazarus Project commence from there. Boom! My dumbass came up with a better explanation than what the game provided. No you didn't! Having the Collectors kill your friends and kick you back down to zero gives you a a direct reason to want to fight against them. Enough so that when Cerberus does you a solid and brings you back to life, you and Shepard are more likely to be willing to work with them. How is Cerberus raiding the Alliance and kidnapping your dead body from your allies supposed to endear themselves? Thank you, GCN. Mass Effect 3's ending is no longer the worst thing I associate with this franchise. No wonder he's called Kid Atari. There's too many pixels in this game, you can't even fathom it! Who's to say one of the species won't damage the infrastructure of Rapture? Take this whale here, for example. Who's to say it won't collide with the bathysphere station? That would make travel throughout Rapture pretty difficult. So even if Rapture didn't collapse into chaos socially, it would have eventually collapsed architecturally. Impossible to build anywhere else? I think not. Hitting my head against the microphone. The Sin Branded will occasionally brush themselves up against these thematic ideas in any given media property. They recognize them and then they send them. Rapture being built on unstable ground 
is part of the theme of the story. Like, this place is too utopian to exist. The people and the ideas that the city are founded upon are not going to work out in the end. And what the game means when it says it couldn't be built anywhere else is that legally it could not be built anywhere else because they wanted to be away from the bounds of other creeds and nations. GCN says at the start of this video he loves this game, and I don't doubt him but he doesn't seem to get it. Doesn't signing over ownership of your property go against Rapture's principles, that being freedom of one's individual and property rights? I mean, didn't Andrew say at the beginning of the game, with the sweat of your brow, Rapture can become your city as well? Now you met Andrew Ryan, the bloody king of Rapture. Well then, that's quite a contradiction, because the first thing I saw when I entered the lighthouse was literally a banner that said, no gods or kings, only man. <laughs> The real sad thing is, the everything wrong with videos on GCN's channel are terrible, but everything else is fine. Enjoyable even. Come on guys, don't encourage this. When Atari Kid graduates the drama club, he's gonna get into Scientology or something. And now for my personal favorite guy. He's the greatest. And I like his video a lot. I know Sin Branded fans have difficulty with this one. That was sarcasm. Click, click, clack, 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 click. What the heck? I'm feigning surprise. My superfluous timer informs me this video is way too long. When I originally scripted this video, it was meant to be just a straightforward response to ugh, Catherine, but I felt it would benefit viewers if I illustrated why I think CinemaSins themselves are bad. That became a real undertaking as it turns out. Then I made the mistake of watching the other Sin branded videos and I realized I gotta talk about everybody. Uh, there were about six different endings I had planned for this video, and none of them are really fitting without the context of what is now going to have to be part two. The Sin Branded deserve the flack that they get for ripping off another YouTuber. But at the end of the day, I want these guys to succeed. I hope this video helps these channels realize what it is that they're doing wrong. You know, beyond the self-evident stuff of owing their entire existence to cinema sins a shitty brand who just begrudgingly tolerates their existence. Okay, so how to close this video. Um, have a happy.